Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Mandeep and in today's video, we are going to discuss about optimizers in deep learning, how we can use optimizers, what is the background. First, we will discuss about the background. Then we will discuss few of the terminologies that we are going to use during our discussion. Then we will move on to our, how actually an optimizer work. And then we will discuss about different type of optimizers. And uh, in the last uh, we can we will discuss about the effect of learning rate on any optimizer. And uh, we are going to have a quick look how basically we use optimizer during our model building process. So let's get started. First, we are going to start with the background. When I say background, background means that how um, or like when the optimizers comes into the picture during the deep learning neural network training process. So for that, uh, you can see that I have taken some data table here. So you can assume that this is my data set. In this data set, have, I'm using the same data set that I have used in my previous videos. So this data set have two variables like age and income. I have named them as x1 and x2. And by insurance is my target variable. This one is my target variable, which is termed as y. So uh, you, you can think of it this data set if uh, given the age and income uh, whether a person will buy insurance or not so you can think of like say for first row age is 25 year and income is 35000 and this person will not buy insurance the same way uh, age is 42 uh, income is 75000 and this person will buy insurance so this is our data set and here is our sample uh, neural network here in the first input layer we have two neurons like uh, one is my x1 my age and the second one is my x2 that's the this is the second this this one is my second uh, hidden layer of neuron it contains two neuron and any again any uh, neural network can contain any number of hidden layers and any hidden layer may contain any number of neurons so here we have only one hidden layer of neurons which have two neurons so inside any neuron we have two basically uh, two different type of things basically uh, one in the first half we do the calculation of weighted sum which we use this formula it is something similar to our straight line formula wi xi plus b wi is the weights that we initialize some random value xi are our x1 and x2 and b is again bias we initialize it with some random value then we using this formula we calculate some ws which we call it weighted sum and this weighted sum value is passed to the second half in the second half we have activation function this uh, you can see that ws is passed to this activation function and this activation function is applied to this value and it then it does some calculation and the output is passed to the next layer so here we have y hat y hat is my predicted value so assume the and once we get the predicted value we calculate the loss we calculate the loss to calculate loss is basically the difference between the actual value and the predicted value so y hat is my predicted value and y is my actual value so loss is calculated using any of this formula like uh, we have different loss functions different type of loss functions to calculate the losses um, we, here we are using mean square error. So basically we are uh, doing the square of uh, y hat uh, minus y and we are doing the scale. Once we calculate the loss, now this part is completed. This all is done using the forward calculation. And then we start updating our weights uh, with this formula using this formula in the backward propagation. So backward propagation, what we do is we do the uh, W new is calculated using this W old minus. This is my learning rate alpha uh, and derivative of loss with respect to derivative of W old. That means derivative of loss with respect to derivative of old weight that we have initialized. So uh, that's how we calculate the new weight. Now, during all this process, uh, optimizers comes into the play when we need to minimize this because this is required and we need to, we will be able to minimize this when our uh, y hat will be very near to y. 
that that's the moment uh, our loss will be minimum and our predicted value will be very close or equal to our actual value so this part of minimizing the loss function is done by the help of optimizers this thing is i think very clear very simple thing so we use some mathematical function to minimize the loss function and those functions are called as uh, optimizers before jumping on to the optimizer discussion we are going to discuss few of the terminologies that we are going to use during this discussion so let us go ahead few of the terminologies that we are going to use during this discussion are uh, this one uh, first one is epoch i want to discuss about epoch epoch is basically here are the uh, the number of times algorithm runs on the whole training data set so basically let's say my training data set has 100 rows of training data set then uh, like once like first time my uh, or my algorithm went through each of the training data set then once all of these training rows have been completed it constitutes one epoch then uh, let's say again in the second iteration my all of the training data set has been iterated then it constitutes the second epoch so basically uh, this is uh, what epoch is now we can discuss about sample. Sample is basically a single row of data set. Uh, so people generally confuse between epoch and sample. Epoch, are, epoch is different thing and sample is different thing. Batch, batch basically it denotes the number of sample to be taken for updating the model parameters. So batch is basically uh, might be, uh, it is something uh, in between of sample and epoch. Epoch is like going through all of the uh, training rows once and sample is like each row batch could be like a group of uh, training rows learning rate it is the parameter that provides the model scale uh, model a scale of how much model weight should be updated so that means we are going to discuss this thing in in detail so this is our learning rate so we take this value something while calculating the new weight and we take this value alpha or uh, as a learning rate we take some value for it. We initial, we generally take it as 0 0.001 and we can take 0 point anything because uh, generally the guideline about learning rate is we should take a minimum value like 0 0.001 or 0 0.1 something. So um, learning rate is like defines uh, the how big step we want to take in uh, updating the weights. So, and then cost and loss function, we can discuss cost. A cost function is used to calculate the cost. That is the difference between the predicted value and the actual value. This part we already discussed. Weight and bias, we already discussed. Weight and bias, uh, the learnable, these are the learnable parameters in model that controls the signal between the two neurons. So, these are the few terminologies, few of them we have already discussed and a couple of them are new so i hope now these things are clear now what we can do is we uh, uh, we can discuss about uh, the optimizer how optimizers basically work so uh, the idea behind optimizer is we need to minimize the loss function so uh, and our loss function is something y minus so y hat minus y uh, we can take absolute or we can in different um, in another loss function we can take so basically the scale of this different but the idea remains the same the idea is that because this value is going to remain always the same y is our actual value we cannot change it so to minimize the difference between these two variables if we think mathematically this is fixed and this is fixed and this is only we can change it uh, so and we need to minimize the difference between them so that means we need to bring this variable near to this value that that's the only point where the uh, loss will be minimum where the this will be, uh, this difference will be minimum so what we do is we try to uh, and this is basically y hat is basically how y hat is basically calculated w y x i plus b uh, summation of i is equal to 0 to n this is the weighted sum and then we do uh, we apply activation function on top of it this is how our um, this is how our y hat is calculated so in even in inside this this is my xi this is constant we cannot change it so we need we only have liberty to change these parameter weight and bias uh, and these will 
the, the changes in these value will help us to change this value and we need to change this w these weights and bias in such a way that this y hat value comes very near to this that's the only point uh, our loss function will be minimum so uh, the, then it brings to us this conclusion that there is a direct relation between our weights and uh, let's say on this side i have taken my weights and on on this uh, side i have taken my loss function so this is my loss so basically because my loss is basically uh, directly driven with my weights so assume that uh, this are uh, these are on some uh, axis and there are some values let's say at this value of weight my loss function is here and at this value of weight my loss function is here and this value of weight my loss function is here this value of weight my loss function is here so uh, assume that uh, there is a graph something comes like this way so uh, assume that this is how my graphs gets constituted uh, get created with the uh, when we draw a graph between weights and loss for a particular problem so our idea here is uh, the the main aim of optimizer is to find this value because at this point of time uh, the loss is minimum here is minimum and when we say our loss is minimum it means that our actual our predicted value is very near to the um, actual value so we need to find this value and at this value we we have certain value of four weights and those weights we should use so uh, this is how uh, our uh, our optimizer works so basically the idea behind uh, optimizer is to minimize the loss and so to me during the minimization of loss what we can do let's say we we start from here and we start from here and we need to come here so uh, before going before coming on to this discussion if i want to take an uh, real world analogy assume that there is a heel uh, there is a uh, basically a mountain and this is the uh, and you are standing here and you need to come the lowest point of this mountain but the uh, but the catch here is that you are blindfolded so uh, you need to reach here so what you will do uh, your approach will be like you will keep coming down uh, until you feel that uh, you start ascending again so you will keep coming down but it also depends that how big steps you are taking so if let's say if you are taking very small small steps so it you may take time to reach this to uh, to reach it till this point but if you are taking let's say uh, if you want to do this activity very fast so uh, it, it is possible that you you decide to take bigger steps and during taking the bigger step it is possible that you may low you may uh, you may basically uh, you may miss this lowest point and you think that since you have raised here and you may uh, think that this is my lowest point but this is not actually your lowest point so this the step size basically also plays an important role in uh, our uh, coming in in our this problem in this real world analogy this is how uh, and in the same way our optimizers work so let's say we start from here and we uh, we need to come here and how we can come is like we start from here and we take small small steps so it is possible that uh, uh, we are taking small small steps uh, we need to do a number of iterations so our time taken will be more in the in this case but let's say if i take very big steps so it is quite possible that i may miss my lowest point or the where my loss function will be minimum which is again a good which is not a good sign so we need to be very sure that uh, that we do not miss any of uh, any of my lowest point so how we can do is we can uh, the ideal approach should be at the starting uh, we can take the big steps and soon as we start uh, descending we can decrease the step size of our um, while descending so this is how actually uh, gradient descent uh, also works or our optimizers also work i have taken the an example of gradient descent here gradient descent is one of the optimizers so the idea again the idea again here is that we need to minimize the value of loss function and um, 
we need to update our weights in such a way that our loss function value comes very minimum and that's what the uh, that's what is achieved with the help of optimizers i hope this real world analogy and this uh, gradient descent uh, this one this graph uh, help you have a better picture how the optimizers works now now let us we we can discuss about different type of uh, uh, optimizers so basically we have the many uh, different type of optimizers gradient descent we just discussed uh, we here we are going to quickly discuss about four of the different uh, um, optimizers gradient descent stochastic gradient descent mini base gradient descent and adagrat so gradient descent we just discussed it is something uh, similar to this one where we have loss function and we have a uh, this uh, what we call it we have this concave a loss function and we need to find the minimum uh, of this this minimum point of this loss function and that's what uh, we achieve with the help of gradient descent we try to find this point and we uh, give those weights when um, our loss function is very minimum and uh, stochastic gradient this difference between gradient descent and stochastic gradient descent is uh, very small gradient descent what actually does is in gradient descent we uh, go through all of the um, all of the rows training rows so let's say if i have 100 training rows uh, so i will go through all of 100 training rows and um, which means one epoch and after that i will update my weights but in stochastic gradient descent i will update my weight at each row update weights at each row So this is only update weights at at each row. So what will happen is that you can think of that now gradient descent is uh, updating its weight. Uh, let's say after hundred rows and so hundred is just an hypothetical example. Uh, hundred like here the idea is that we as many number of training rows are. Uh, present in our training data set that constitutes one epoch so after each epoch gradient descent updates its new updates its weights or uh, assign the weights new value and stochastic gradient descent is works similar very similar to gradient descent but it just updates its weight at each uh, uh, at each of the iteration mini batch gradient descent is again the combination of gradient descent and stochastic gradient descent so gradient descent was updating its weights let's say after 100 row and stochastic gradient descent is updating its weight let's say after each row mini batch gradient descent what it will do it will combine uh, it will create small subsets or batches so let's say if i have 100 training data set it will let's say create a batches of 20 20 rows so uh, it will update its weight uh, after let's say uh, that particular batch size and it, let's say assume that it is of 20 rows so here uh, here updation of weight happened only once per epoch uh, here updation of weight happened at each row that means 100 times and here updation of weight will happen let's say i have 20 batch of 20 rows and after every batch i will update it so it means that here updation of row will happen at uh, at five times so this is only the difference the same way uh, the same way this ada grad uh, works ada grad is basically works the similar way ada grad means adaptive gradient descent um, in ada grad what we do is uh, we have this learning rate so basically uh, we have this learning rate learning rate is this one we which we use uh, or you can think of learning rate is the step size uh, learning rate uh, is this one. So, uh, in uh, this our adaptive grad, ADA grad or adaptive gradient descent, what we do is we use learning rate for different uh, dif for different rows, like different value of learning rate for different rows. But in our gradient descent, we have uh, same learning rate for one epoch, and we then update it in the next epoch. So these are the few. Uh, these are the few. Uh, basically, uh, different type of gradient, um, different type of optimizers. Now uh, we can think of 
uh, we want we can discuss about effect of learning rate effect of learning rate is like as i discussed here a small learning rate requires many updates before reaching the meaning point so let's say if i start from here and i am taking very very small steps so what will happen in that case it since i am taking very very small step it will take time me to reach uh, this point so it is very slow process whereas uh, if i take let's say big steps so what will happen is in that case is i may miss so let's say i start from here i come here and let's say i come here and then i come here i may miss the minimum point which i already discussed but the right what is the right combination is we start with the bigger steps at the initial um, starting and then soon as we keep going downwards we will decrease our step size as well so in this way we will not uh, lose our minimal or the optimal point where our loss function is minimum so we should uh, think learning uh, we, we should think learning rate has a uh, very uh, very deep effect on uh, calculating the optimizers or while uh, while uh, working with the optimizers so and in the last what we can discuss is we can discuss uh, how to use optimizer when we will be creating our model so um, as i this as i already told you optimizers are mathematical function whose uh, whose main role is to minimize the loss function and they have been already formulated um, and they have been already implemented as well in the python library so what we have to do is we just have to go and pick and use those optimizers according to our uh, problem or the nature of our problem so this is how we are going to use uh, optimizers when we will be creating model uh, and we will be doing this practically in our coming uh, tutorials so what we will do is we will do model dot model dot compile and we will pass the loss function as i told you we discussed the loss functions as well uh, and optimizers as you can see that here optimizer is passed value of optimizer is passed as adam the adam is also one of the optimizer so what it will say that uh, while during the training process it will tell the model that you need to use the uh, adam as an optimizer and uh, you need to use accuracy as matrices so during the tra training process what will happen is that um, model will use this categorical cro cross entropy this is an example only uh, so model will use categorical cross entropy as loss function and adam as an optimizer and met accuracy as an matrix so this is uh, just a simple example uh, how we can use uh, optimizers during the uh, our model building process so i hope uh, all these things make sense to you that's all for this video guys um, see you in the next video